Hey, Tammy here, back with section 6.2, on which we will look at endergonic and exogonic, and also a little bit about the molecule ATP that is so important for our cells. Uh, first of all, this idea of metabolism, this is not a new one for you guys. Uh, remember, metabolism is the sum, which means everything added together of all the chemical reactions happening in your bodies uh, or in a cell, which is a lot, <clears throat> right? The reactants are the things that are taking part in the reaction, and then the product is what you end up with. Uh, we talk about free energy, uh, which is delta capital G, okay, Gibbs free energy, uh, is the amount of energy available to perform the work, Gibbs. And you'll learn more <clears throat> about that in chemistry class. Remember exergonic, sometimes we refer to them as exothermic. Uh, the products have less free energy than the reactants. Okay, the reactant level is high, the reaction takes place, the products are lower. <clears throat> and they have less energy because energy was given off. Uh, sometimes these are referred to as ex exothermic, like I said, because a lot of times that's heat being given off, uh, could, but it could be light or other forms of energy as well. Uh, these tend to occur more spontaneously uh, on their own without help uh, because they are losing energy. <clears throat> Endergonic, sometimes called endothermic, Again, endothermic meaning input of heat. Uh, endergonic just means gaining energy. Okay, so the reactants are down here, and then the products then are higher on a graph, and I'll show you that here in a second, because they have gained energy. These tend to be not spontaneous. They need help for them to happen because they need an input of energy. Here we are looking at the two different graphs between exergonic and endergonic. Notice <clears throat> up here the reactants, okay, R. Down here are the products, P. Here is the Gibbs free energy level. So we're starting at a high level and we end up <clears throat> at a low energy. So this, this loss of energy from this point down to this point, okay, is our Gibbs free energy. Delta G is less than zero because it has lost energy. Uh, that energy is released. Uh, notice that there's this little bump here, and we'll talk about this more in the next video. Okay, this would be our activation energy that's needed to get the reaction started. Then once it's started, it's downhill. <clears throat> and we end up with our products. Endergonic, remember, is absorbing energy, so our reactants are down here, our products are up here, so we notice that we've gone up, so we have a delta G that is positive, where over here it's going to be less than zero or negative, uh, and our products have higher energy levels. So this would be like, an example would be like photosynthesis over here, okay, where you're taking the sun, and you're taking reactants like CO2 and H2O, okay, you're adding energy from the sun, and you end up here with products like glucose that are high energy, okay? Uh, over here, the opposite of that would be cellular respiration. Okay, cellular respiration, you're taking a high uh, reactant like glucose, and you're breaking it down into CO2 and water, and we've released energy. And a lot of times that energy is released in a form that cells can use called ATP. What is this ATP stuff you speak of, Hammy? Well, it stands for adenosine triphosphate. Okay, we call ATP. Uh, it's a high energy compound used to drive me metabolic reactions. Okay, glucose, even one glucose has way too much energy for most cellular processes. It would be way too much. So cellular, cellular respiration, we break that glucose down into like 36 or 38 ATP and we lose some energy in that transformation. But now this ATP is just the right amount of energy for a lot of cellular processes. Okay, it's not stored for a long time by cells. 
When it's made, it's used immediately. And it's constantly flipping back and forth from the energetic form of triphosphate uh, to the not energetic form of ADP. Uh, and we call this the ATP cycle, uh, where it goes back and forth. Uh, we oftentimes in bio one refer to it as the energy dump truck, right? Hauls energy to a process, comes back, picks up more energy, hauls it somewhere to be used, and back and forth and back and forth we go. Uh, what is this ATP stuff? It's an adenine. Uh, this would be a nitrogenous base. And ribose, which is a five carbon sugar. And those two together, adenine. Ribose is where we get the name adenosine. And then you have your three phosphate groups here on the end. Okay, And oftentimes that high energy bond is here between the second and third phosphate. And again, we say this is a coupled reaction because energy released from ATP is used to drive a process. Uh, and then other processes then that give off energy are used to make ATP again. Again, here's just another picture of ATP uh, with our adenine up here. Uh, here's our five carbon sugar, our ribose, and then our one, two, third phos three phosphate groups, triphosphate. Uh, here, I want you to notice this wavy line right here. That is that high energy bond where that second and third phosphate breaks off and is attached, breaks off and is attached. And that's how it sort of carries energy through the cell. Uh, this slide is just showing that ATP cycle. So an endergonic reaction is the creation of ATP. Okay, so you have ADP uh, plus capital E energy. Okay, so when you add energy, ADP, okay, endergonic, you're putting in energy. Now ATP is charged. Okay, then this can be used to drive some cellular process like active transport or muscle contraction or nerve impulses. And this would be an exergonic reaction because reaction, you're going to give off that energy to some cellular process. You're going to have low energy ADP at the, at the bottom here again. goes back to the mitochondria where it'll get recharged and around and around and around we go in the ATP cycle. Uh, this is a classic example of where ATP, this would be the cellular uh, cellular process that ATP would be being used for, uh, where you have the actin and the myosin filaments in the muscle, and you've got these little bridge boys down here. And then ATP, the energy from ATP, when it's split, okay, puts the myosin cross bridge into a cocked position on the actin, Okay, and causes it to pull, and the two filaments slide past each other, and that causes motion, kinetic energy, okay, or in this case, she's, okay, lifting the weight, okay, so that energy is just all energy transformations, uh, and ATP is a little uh, unit that our cells, little currency that our cells use for a lot of these different processes.